गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द कंप्लीट वीडियो ऑफ द चैप्टर व्हाट इज डेमोक्रेसी एंड व्हाई डेमोक्रेसी एंड दिस वीडियो हैज बीन मेड फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो विल डिस्कस द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी एंड वी ऑल्सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वाई डेमोक्रेसी इज बेटर फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द चैप्टर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शीड नो दैट वट इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी और इन अदर वर्ड्स from which word democracy is derived the word democracy is derived from the greek word demos and kratos demos stands for people whereas kratos stands for power or rule it means that rule of the people or power of the people so basically democracy represents the power of the ordinary people so let us discuss the meaning of democracy what is the meaning of democracy democracy is a form of government in which the rulers are elected by the people now question may arise then who are the rulers what kind of election who are the people and what kind of government we need to understand all these answers in the upcoming topics but one thing is very clear that democracy is in in its limited form or in its limited aspect is nothing but the form of government in which the rulers are elected by the ordinary people abraham lincoln remarks remarked that democracy is a form of the people is a form of government of the people by the people and for the people so basically democracy revolves around the public or people ordinary people so we understood that democracy is nothing but the form of government and this is the limited definition of democracy it means we are discussing democracy in terms of government only and we came to understand that democracy is for the people by the people and of the people or it revolves around the people ordinary people or in other words in other words here the leaders or representatives are chosen by the ordinary public now let us discuss the features of democracy as we know that democracy is the form of government and it it has certain features so let us discuss those features one by one in a democracy the first feature is the final decision making power must rest with those who elected by the people i mean to say here the final decision making will lie in the hand of the public through their representative i mean to say here the representatives will get the actual decision making power no other body has the authority or right to take the decision regarding the governance of the country here only those who are elected by the people or those who are the representative of the people will have the decision making power this is this is the first feature now what would be the second feature a democracy must be based on a free and fair election where those currently in power have the fair chance of losing we need to understand this very carefully <clears throat> because democracy is all about a government that is termed as representative democ democratic or representative government but for choosing the representative government the election process is adopted and the election process must be free and fair and in the particular election it should be fair enough to give chance to all those currently in power they have fair chance to lose the election like recently we saw in case of bengal bjp lost bjp lost and trinamool congress again came to power this is because of the free and fair election so we need to understand the basic hallmark of democracy is that that here it is based on free and fair election in other forms of government there is a provision of election but that election cannot be termed as free and fair it is the only feature of democracy similarly the third feature tells that each adult citizen must have one vote and each vote must have one value it means that democracy is based on the feature one vote one man one value even a single rickshaw puller or industrialist will cast only one vote and each vote will have well equal value so this is this ensures the political equality in our country or in a democratic country similarly a democratic government rulers rules within limits set by the constitutional law and citizens right we need to understand it very carefully that it is one of the wonderful feature of democracy that even the government rules or runs its governance 
within the limits set by the constitutional law and the citizens right the opposition parties are allowed to function freely before and after the election and we need to understand here the opposition political party are allowed to function freely before and after the election it doesn't matter whether they won the election or lose the election but they are free enough to criticize the government so criticism against the government is another hallmark or another feature of democracy similarly the democratic prince governments are based on fundamental principle of political equality as we discussed one man one vote one value it shows nothing but the political equality <clears throat> now next is democracy is better than other forms of government because it allows us to correct its own mistakes we need to understand that democracy is better than other forms of government because it allows us to correct its own mistakes we need to understand here it very carefully that if we are going to compare it with other forms of government it is the best form of government or it in fact it is if it is not best then it is at least better than other forms of government why because it allows us to correct its own mistakes now in a democracy ordinary people can correct their mistakes if they have elected someone as their representative and in the coming future it will be proved wrong representative then the public has the chance they had the right to correct their mistake and they will correct their mistake in the next election by choosing the next people as their representative democracy enhances the dignity of the citizen because it is based on the principle of political equality we already discussed that because of the political equality everyone will feel dignified even the rickshaw puller will feel that he is getting respect in the society because he is getting a vote that is equivalent to the vote of an industrialist so at least they will feel privileged at least they will feel equal on the political ground so these are the various features that are very important or that are applicable in a democratic form of government if any country is a democratic government then these features will be applicable in that particular country or in that government now if you are going to talk about democracy we need to understand here certain demerits are there certain demerits are there so whatever we discussed we discussed in terms of features now we are going to discuss some demerits also some demerits are also associated with the democracy that is why it is not the best form of government but it is better form of government now first of all it is mentioned here that leaders keep changing in a democracy and this leads to instability or political instability so here we need to understand that democracy in a democracy leaders keep changing with the time with every 5 year a new election is there and with the election the leaders leaders are changing so this will lead to political instability this is the first drawback or demerit next is it will lead to political competition and power play and there is no scope for morality in order to win the election the political parties can go to any extent they can use all the illegal and illegal methods to win the election they will never go back or they will never pull back and they will use all the possible methods to win the election elected leaders do not know the best interest of the people it leads to bad decision often it is found that leaders are not knowing the best interest of the ordinary public and whatever they are taking the decision taking something as a decision or taking some issues as a decision the decision their decisions do not always correct next is democracy leads to corruption for it is based on electoral competition we all know that through the electoral competition the democratic government is elected and as the democratic government is elected it leads to corruption because for winning the election every every political party will use black money every political party will use all the possible unfair means and even the ordinary people don't know what is good for them and they should not decide anything we need to understand this is the demerit now we need to understand the features of democracy in context of different countries i mean to say we are going to discuss the case studies of different countries and after that we'll come to know that whether the democratic principles that we discussed so far is applicable there or not is applicable there or not we are going to discuss first of all with the pakistan in pakistan general parvez musharraf led a military coup in october 1999 to so the military revolution he overthrew the democratic democratically elected government nawaz sharif was there at the time so he was the prime minister and he was overthrown by the general parvez musharraf and he himself declared the chief executive of the country in 2002 he changed his position to president now parvez musharraf claimed himself as the president new president 
and after that in order to satisfy the global media he held a referendum and according to the referendum he tried to show that people are with me and finally he got five year extinction the referendum was based on malpractices and fraud and it was shown to the global world that the people are with the parvez musharraf finally a new amendment constitution was amended and according to this president can dismiss the national or provisional assemblies now an act was passed or amendment was passed and through this act the parvez musharraf got enormous power even to dismiss the parliament now thereafter the work of the civilian cabinet supervised by the national security council dominated by military officers one by one military officers were capturing all the important administrative posts after passing this law the election held to the national and state assemblies thereafter one law was passed and according to that law new government was elected in the country but still the power was in the hand of parvez musharraf elected representative will have they, they had some power but final power rest in the hand of military officers and general parvez musharraf so this incident shows that the feature of democracy is violated why because what was the first feature that power will lie in the hand of chosen representatives but here we can see in pakistan the power was not in the hand of chosen representative of the people actually it was the power lies the power rest in the hand of general parvez musharraf who was not the elected representative so in this way we can say the feature of democracy is not applicable in pakistan now come to the china it is the second case study we need to understand about china in china elections are regularly held after every 5 years for electing the country's parliament that is national people's congress they have the power to appoint the president now the parliament of china has the power to appoint the president and here nearly 3000 people elected from all the parts some members are elected by the army also and before contesting the election the candidates need the approval of chinese communist party so here we need to understand that in the chinese there is a domination of a single political party that is chinese communist party only those who member in communist party or eight small parties allied were allowed to contest election held in 2002 2003 the government is always formed by the communist party it is it is a historical trend that china in china there is no democracy why because every time a single political party is winning the election there is no free and fair election so lack of free and fair election is again violation of the features of democracy so again we can say that in china there is no proper democracy now come to the third country and after that we will analyze whether democracy is applicable here or not since its independence in 1930 mexico holds elections after every 6 years to elect its president the country has never been under the military rule or dictator rule but until 2000 all elections was won by a party called pri full form is institutional revolutionary party opposition parties did contest the election but never win the election why because the pri used many dirty tricks to win the election they used all the possible tricks to win the election all polit- all those who are employed in government offices had to attend its party meeting even the teachers of the government school were forced to force the parents to vote for pri so this is how we can say that here free and fair election is not taking place and here democracy is not there now come to the saudi arabia estonia and fiji these are the different countries we need to, we need to understand that in saudi arabia women do not have right to vote now compare this situation to india or any democratic country where everyone is having equal voting right but in saudi arabia women was not having voting right similarly in estonia not all the citizens were getting the voting right <clears throat> in fiji also that is island country here also the vote of one particular fiji fiji member was more than the indian physician or fijian so here there is there is no political equality so all these were violating the basic principles or the basic features of democracy that shows that these features are lacking in those countries and that is why all, all the above discussed countries can't claim that it is a democratic country now come to the next country that is zimbabwe it is an african country and we need to, we need to understand how zimbabwe government undemocratic and autocratic and for that we need to understand the background of the country zimbabwe was was under the control of uh, janu pf political party the important party that led the freedom struggle and its leader was robert mugabe 
he was very popular but thereafter he used many unfair means to win the election Zimbabwe was ruled by Janu PA party the party that led the freedom struggle and Robert Mugabe he became he as we discussed that he used all the unfair practices to win the election now thereafter over the years his government has changed the constitution several times to increase the power of the president and make him less accountable Robert Mugabe used all the possible methods to win the election to win the to increase his power even he changed constitution more time more than 10 times or 8 times to give more power to his regime and to reduce the power of president similarly opposition political parties were harassed and their meeting was disrupted so there was no scope for criticism all the demonstrations against the government was declared illegal and even the right to criticize was completely abolished even the television and radio and are controlled by the government and give only the ruling party version the government has ignored some some uh, court judgment that went against it it has a precise judges so we need to understand everything was under the control of robert mugabe and robert mugabe became dictator although he came to power through democracy through democratic values but here what we saw that that again a democracy is violating is not violating in fact the civilian rights or it is controlled by constitution but here we can say in in zimbabwe again democracy is was not there why because in a democracy everything was controlled by government and government was not checked by the constitution so this shows that it is a complete violation of the features of democracy so far we discussed the limited meaning of democracy we discussed also the different aspects of democracy we came to know that how democracy is a very valuable or a very important form of government so whatever we discussed it was the limited meaning of democracy it was a limited version of democracy now let us discuss the broader meaning or broader version of democracy so first of all we should understand that democracy is not only a form of government but it is a complete universal principle or a complete ideology that can be applied anywhere and that is why it is universal in nature so democratic values or democratic core or democratic core values can be adopted can be applied anywhere it is applicable in all the institutions be it small institution be it large institution be it formal institution be it informal institution even in the family if in a family father is go, is discussing with all the family members then the father is a democratic man and his family term will be will be termed as a democratic family because here negotiates there is a scope for negotiation there is scope for talk discussion all these things are possible in a democracy so we can see here democracy is all about is all about a principle or an ideology that can be applied anywhere in or in any walk of life so we need to understand here that democracy in its broader form is not only a form of government but it is a complete ideology it is a complete broad framework it is a complete principle that can be applied anywhere so this is the proper meaning or broader meaning of democracy so far we discussed the limited meaning then after we discussed the broader meaning and now we are going to discuss we are going to discuss in short that what we achieved so far we achieved that democracy is a form of government in a limited sense and in broad sense or in a broader meaning or in broader sense it is a complete ideology that can be applied anywhere in any walk of life and it is universal in nature because it can be applied in any situation in any time frame and in any dimension so we need to understand here that democracy is very very important and why we we are focusing more on democracy because it is at least better than other forms of government if we are going to compare the democracy with demo, with a, a monarchy or dictatorship or autocracy you will find it is better because it will provide the basic things that are required for growth of human being that are very important for the growth of human being so this is all about in this video and here we are going to end our discussion thank you so much for your presence